So for a couple months ago, I made a video on the new Terrain Tools package in Unity, but I never really did it as a full-on guide on how I make terrains using Unity for my speed level design videos, for instance. So in this video, we're going to do that. I'm going to walk you guys through the whole process of me creating a terrain that I similarly do for my level design videos. If you have any questions or need help or you want to suggest me something that I should cover on the channel as well as a video, make sure to leave a comment on this video. And also, this video is brought to you by Nature Manufacture. Nature Manufacture are the creators of LVE 2019, also called Lava and Volcano Environment. LVE is a big pack of systems, tools, textures, particles, post-processing stacks, and models which give you the ability to create volcanoes, caves, interiors, and rivers in high quality results and very efficient in render setup. The new version of LVE includes support for the latest versions of Unity and for HDRP or the High Definition Render Pipeline and the Lightweight Render Pipeline. It even supports the new Terrain system in Unity and their other popular asset RAM 2019, also called River Auto Material. You can use LVE to create very advanced and connected lava river networks and fully customize your lava. There's also physics simulation for objects that flow on lava surface, automatic heating for objects, profile system so you can save and load presets, and you can have the rivers shape accordingly to terrain slopes with a couple of clicks. Additionally, there are 99 high quality ground and lava textures with albedo, normal, ambient occlusion, height and emission maps, 39 rocks and cliffs, 40 rock prefabs, 18 cliff prefabs, 11 particles, and so much more. We have a link in the description to lava and volcano environment, so make sure to check it out. All right, so here we are in Unity, and I'm running Unity 2019.2, the beta version, and I'm only running a 3D project, so nothing like HDRP or sorts. So what we're gonna do first and foremost is we're gonna need to import the Terrain Tools package, which is a new package by Unity that includes some assets, some content, and a more complex system that's in addition to the terrain system that they built last year in order for us to actually make good looking terrains in Unity. So if you actually, I have a full on guide tutorial video on the Terrain Tools package solely, so if you wanna watch that, there's gonna be a link in the description as well. Hey man, look, I'm just trying to get some self promotion out of the way. Um, no, but really, if you don't want to watch it, it's fine. You're still going to learn a lot from this video, but for more information, just check that out. All right, so let's not waste any more time and let's go into window and open up the package manager. Now in the package manager, I want you to click advanced and make sure that you have the show preview packages option turned on. When you do, let's just browse down in this list a little bit and find terrain tools and let's highlight it and press install. Cool, so once that's done, you're gonna see a new button appear at the top of the package manager. This is gonna say download asset samples from the asset store and we're gonna click this. This is gonna take you to the asset store with the new asset pack that Unity released called Terrain Tools Sample Asset Pack. This basically includes some textures like you can see in the screenshot here and it also includes some new brushes for the new terrain system. So overall, I would personally call this a necessity so we're just gonna go ahead and import this. Awesome. Now we have it in the project and it's in the samples folder right here. Next step is to create a terrain. Now the thing is, you could go to your hierarchy just like before, go into 3D game object and click on terrain, but there's actually a new way of creating terrains introduced with the terrain tools package. So now we can actually go into window, terrain and then terrain toolbox. Terrain toolbox is the new window, a, a new window for a new workflow of basically creating terrains, which allows you to play with terrain settings, terrain utilities, you know, before you create a terrain, you can now actually set the width, height, you know, length, um, start position, all sorts of things. And on top of all of that, you can actually now create presets for terrains containing all the details and the settings you enter here, and then use a preset whenever you create a new terrain. But for now, we're not gonna really dive into all of these settings because I have a video, you know, fully dedicated to this, so make sure to check it out, link in the description. <laughs> but yeah, for now, we're just gonna create, and that's gonna create a terrain. So it's now contained inside of a group object, which is not really a problem for us. We don't really have to, like, bother playing with this. 
but the important terrain game object is this one, the weirdly named one. <laughs> I don't know about the name, maybe it's like it has something to do with the grouping system, but we don't really want to bother with this. You could rename it if you want to, but you know, I'm just saying. So if you've been watching my speed level design videos before, or if you know me at all, um, you'll probably know that I normally do a little bit of highlighting once I start creating a terrain. And that means if I'm gonna have like a biome, let's say over here, like a forest or something, I normally just paint a green texture there just to have like a highlight of the size that the biome is gonna have. So I'm actually gonna get started by doing just that. We're gonna wanna enter the paint settings right here and it's probably gonna highlight the raised or lower terrain option for you but we're gonna wanna enter paint texture. And I've already added a layer called moss onto my terrain but the way you do it is you go to edit terrain layers and then simply hit add layer. And this is basically going to highlight all of the layers that you have in your project currently. And because the sample asset pack that we just imported into our project includes some layers, these are the ones that are popping up for me. And it's probably gonna be the same for you. So what you wanna do is since I've already added moss, you can still highlight moss and then add it in but I'm also going to go ahead and add some rock. Cool, so now inside terrain layers, we I both have the moss and the rock layers. And you can see that it looks pretty huge given the fact that the terrain itself is huge to begin with. So what we can do is we can unfold the settings for the rock layer by clicking this little arrow here and then browse down to where it says tiling settings. Now the bigger the tiling settings in size is, the bigger the texture is going to be. So for instance, it's at a hundred right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decrease this to like, let's say 10. And now it looks weird because we haven't done Y axis. So let's repeat that here. For now, I wanna paint the moss layer that we have right here. So once we select it here in the terrain layers field, we can simply browse down a little bit more and play with the brush settings. So first and foremost, we can set a brush size and if you're unsure how big this is, you can always go into the scene window once again. And I'm just basically going to make it as big as possible and then start painting in order to get the moss in here. And next, I'm gonna wanna add one more layer in here. So let's go to edit terrain, add layer, and let's add some dirt. Now let's highlight the dirt and basically paint, uh, let's actually decrease the brush size first. I'm also going to pick this diffused brush instead of this harsh one so that it becomes a little bit more smooth like this. And then let's actually paint a little bit of dirt right here. So I'm basically going to fill the parts where I don't want a specific biome to take place. All right, so I've basically just highlighted a few parts in my level here where I wanna have some trees in these parts. Now the problem is you can see that it looks kind of like very harsh at the edges where it doesn't really blend into the next texture right next to it. And that's because we have a very high opacity value right here. So we can actually decrease to something like 25 and then pick the dirt texture and simply start painting again to see that it's actually blending in a little bit nicer now. Actually not holding down the mouse button but just kind of like pressing every here and basically every now and then. So we can just like do it at the edges and you can see that it's becoming a little bit more smooth towards the edges right here. You could also hold down your mouse button if you want to, but then you're gonna need a very, very low opacity value right here. So if I switch over to moss and then have this set to be 2.5, I can drag my mouse across and you will see that it barely changes unless I actually go over it multiple times like this, which is good because this is going to add more to the coloring of your terrain. So it's actually really, really good. And now I'm gonna do something a little bit more different. I'm going to switch over from paint texture into set height. Set height is literally what it says in the name. It's basically a tool that's gonna allow you to set a specific height for the terrain. So we can browse down here and you will see that we have a set height controls panel. Now here we can set a specific height and for this case I'm only gonna set 15 because it's actually kind of high enough. And then instead of actually painting like this, I'm simply gonna click flatten all. And that's going to flatten the whole terrain. And the reason I do this is because if we have the height zero for the starting point of the terrain, that means we can't go below zero. So zero is the minimum value. And that means if we wanna have like a hole in the ground or something similar for like water, or maybe like a little bit of a cave entrance, 
we can't do it unless we actually set a height that's greater than zero. And now I'm gonna switch over to raise or lower terrain and then pick one of the new brushes that we have available thanks to the, the sample asset pack that we imported earlier. Now if I were to paint this in, you can see that it becomes really weird because number one, we have a very small brush size. So let's fix that by increasing the size a little bit. Like this is looking much more realistic. And number two, we have a very strong brush strength because it's set to be one. So we could, we could actually set it a little bit lower and you can see that the elevation of this this uh, preview that I can call this is much lower now. So let's increase the brush size a little bit more. And I think this looks good. So let's actually paint this in here once by just clicking the left mouse button. Now, I don't feel like the height of this, the elevation is not enough. So I'm going to do this one more time, like here, and then repeat it a couple times at a static position right here. There you go, I think that looks really nice. And then I'm going to increase the brush strength and decrease the brush size and then do it once more at the top here. And then maybe we can repeat this here and also here. And then I'm going to rotate my brush. So I'm gonna set it to be around 90 degrees. 92 is fine. And it's going to now be a little bit more sideways. So let's just paint around here for a little bit. Oops, that's too much. <laughs> there we go. So we have a very nice kind of hill here now. And then I'm going to switch over to another brush and increase the size once again and just paint a little bit in the surrounding areas like this. And then I'm gonna pick this brush right here and just put a little bit of elevation right here. And I also decrease the brush strength greatly, just so you know, so make sure you play around with that value as well. Now you can see that this is used for elevation, right? You can also use this for decreasing or lowering the terrain. And you can be brush specific, meaning if I, for instance, go here, and then hold down control while I actually hover my mouse over here and then press once, you can see that it goes down. Now, obviously this is too much, so I'm not gonna do that, but I'm gonna decrease the brush strength even more and then do it a couple times here. All right, so you can see that I raised and lowered some parts of the terrain now, and it just kind of adds a little bit more to the personality of the terrain, I feel like. And now I'm gonna go back into the paint texture settings and play with the opacity value and start painting a little bit around the terrain. And now I'm going to smoothen out some of the parts so we don't get these like weird extended textures right here. So I'm just gonna pick the smooth height tool here and then smoothen some parts out. And once I finish painting the terrain, I just use the hydraulic erosion tool by going to the erosion hydraulic branch right here and then just paint around a little bit as well. And for those of you who don't know, the hydraulic erosion tool basically has the same effect on a terrain that rain has on a real life terrain. Like it makes it a little bit, it, it kind of makes a path for itself over time. All right, so I think that should be showing a little bit of the details of how I make the maps. Um, you can basically see that if I zoom out a little bit again, basically what I was doing this whole time is I'm, for instance, painting all just moss right here, right? And I'm just making sure that it's as green as possible. 
And then with a low opacity and a very small brush size, I paint the scree, um, which is basically a type of like mountain texture you can see here. I'm just painting a little bit every here, like a little bit here and a little bit there, just every now and then. And I'm doing this in order to give it a little bit more of like this realistic, it's kind of like a bumpy type of texture, if that makes sense. Um, I'm not doing it too much on the white areas because I'm just highlighting those as like a little bit of something else. But here, I'm just kind of like bumping it up, um, which I'm not doing by literally raising the terrain all the time because it wouldn't look very nice and it just kind of like hides all the other objects behind it. So I'm only doing it with a little bit of a texture on top of whatever is already raised. So as you can see, it looks much, much better than just like, you know, a solid, a little bit of color on the terrain. And I like this method, actually. I, that's why I wanted to make this video to actually give you guys this tip um, to simply use this technique for building your levels because that's how I make it look good. Like all the way back here, I had solely moss around here and then I just painted a lot of scree down here, a little bit here and less here. And then just you can see this green transitioning into the into the darker color here which actually makes it look like pebbles and rocks and a bunch of different stones, which is really good. And then it obviously blends in with the mountain here and, you know, continues as a hill and stuff like that. So I think, I, I believe that this looks very believable as in terms of like making it look realistic. That's my email. <laughs> and it just kind of like looks more realistic because it adds personality to the terrain. It's not just this flat terrain with a bunch of different grass types and a few trees and rocks and stuff like that. Like not just 3D models, but actual complex terrain texturing on top of it. And yeah, I think this is all I wanted to share for this video actually. Um, I, at first, my initial plan for this video was to literally give as many tips on using the different sculpt tools and stuff like that as possible. But it's not even possible. <laughs> I mean, there are just too many, too many tools. If I were to give you a tip and a full on guide on how to use every single tool, we'd be here all day. So instead of doing that, I just taught you like raise or lower terrain, paint texture and set height, and then a few others like smooth height. And then I did it myself to give you the speedy over overview video on how I make a terrain myself. Of course, using the tools that I only gave you. So I didn't use like a bunch of different sculpting tools. I only used the ones that I gave you, which I think beats the original, the initial plan for this video and gives you a better one. But then again, if you have any other things you would like me to suggest in terms of like cover this or make a video on this or make a video on every single tool anyway, because I want to see it, let me know in the comments. I'm always open to feedback and stuff like that. So just hit me up. All right, so that should be a descriptive overview of how I make my terrains in Unity and how you can make your own terrains as well. If you have any questions or need help, feel free to ask in the comment section below and also join our Discord server where we have over 10,000 like-minded game developers who love to help, chat, ask questions, share their progress, meme, complain about YouTube, literally anything. You can join our Discord server by going to the link in the description. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure to give this video a thumbs up to show some support and hit the subscribe button to stay up to tune for new content. We're going to do a lot more level design kind of content, so you definitely don't want to miss out. With that being said, I'm going to be super active in the comment section and in our Discord server, so I look forward to see you guys there. Thanks for watching, have a good night, and peace out guys.